Good morning, everybody. Charlie, November Juliet 7 Victor with Red Summit RF here. Today, I am continuing my series on portable Morse code paddles. Welcome back to those of you who have been following along. And if you're new to the channel, I hope that you find these videos useful. Today, I am going to be reviewing the pressure paddle by VK3IL. And also, I, I'm going to be talking a little bit about some of the other options you might have. Before we get going though, let me remind you that there, to uh, check out the comments in this video and other videos after they've posted. There's good information from other viewers uh, that add and supplement the information that I say that uh, could be useful to you. So okay, let's go ahead and get on over uh, to the bench and check it out. I have two different pressure pedals built from the VK3IL design right here. These two paddles were sent to me as a gift from my friend Owen, Mike Zero, Kilo Victor India in England. If you look around, you might find pressure paddles in ready form, like the K6ARK pressure paddle. Uh, but generally speaking, the pressure paddles are usually in kit form and you have to build them. I have one I ordered here. The VK3IL pressure paddle is no exception, and Owen took the time to make these two pressure paddles for me from the VK3IL kit. The VK3IL kit may be a little intimidating for some people, requiring you to solder SMD components into the circuit board. In fact, I have put off making my own pressure paddle kit for several years, partly for that reason. The CW paddle works using two pressure sensors that are placed on uh, in the circuit with a MOSFET. They're, they're on either side of the, of the board here. And the gate of the MOSFET moves uh, from an open to circuit to a closed circuit as the pressure sensor is lightly pressed. Basically, it's a circuitry, the circuitry acts as uh, just like the mechanical paddles do, closing the circuit when the pressure is, is uh, depressed on either side. I made a simpler pressure paddle from K Tim Keen K5DEZ's design. Uh, I used discrete components for this one instead of SMD, and the design requires the use of a battery inside, actually. I actually built mine with a little board inside that I can take out and replace the battery, and it has an on-off switch right here. So I have it in the off position right now, just so that the battery doesn't drain while it's inside. Unlike this paddle that I made with the battery, the VK3 uh, IL design, it, it draws its power from the, the cable when you plug it into your device, whatever it is, your transceiver. It'll draw power that way. The smaller of the two paddles here that's on the, on the uh, scale weighs 22 grams here uh, with the cable. I suspect most of the weight is actually from the cable too. Uh, uh, the larger paddle, uh, can't weigh as much, much more, but uh, you know I did, I'm not going to weigh yet. So the 22 grams is well within the low range for the groupings I have established for using AI. Let me move the scale out of the way here and give you a look at that. I need to rerun this uh, AI calculation now since I've reviewed several more paddles since that first run, and uh, the range may need to be adjusted a little bit for this. When it comes to volume, let me get the ruler on here and. We'll take a look. Yeah, I think, uh, what is it, about seven. Yeah, um, it's about seven centimeters with that little extra bit of shrink uh, extending over the, the, the strain relief there a little bit. The width is, looks like it's gonna be about 2.3 centimeters and then the, the thickness of it is 0.75 centimeters, so it's pretty thin. So you can see how that compares to some of the other paddles that we've had in the past. Uh, this uh, has a total volume then of uh, 12, about 12 cubic centimeters compared to the other paddles, so its, it's uh, volume is quite small. Uh, no adjustments are available for this paddle because there are no mechanical parts. However, this uh, simpler one that I made with the different components and it's a different circuit board, you can adjust the sensitivity of the pressure paddles of these, of these sensors 
by changing the voltage that you apply to the circuit. So I, you can use different batteries and put them inside and, and get a different sensitivity here. There are no mounting options unless you 3D print the uh, some yourself. I've seen some pretty interesting leg mounted designs too. So uh, there is a link below to some of those 3D printed mounting option ideas. You'll uh, probably enjoy seeing some of those. So check that out. Agility will vary based on your muscle memory and how well you train to, to yourself to accurately hit these pressure sensors here. I had quite a bit of difficulty using this paddle at first, but as I learned how to use it, I, it became easier and I ended up finally being able to send at 25 plus words a minute. One thing I noticed about these paddles, however, is while the iambic squeeze option exists, it's very difficult to get it to perform without missing that last character because it is so sensitive. I ended up abandoning the, the iambic squeezing thing altogether to ensure that I was sending accurately Maybe with more practice, I could I could find some success. And after taking uh, this out in the field eight different summit on eight different summits uh, on the air activations in, over the past eight weeks, I feel like I've become pretty effective in sending with it. You know, but uh, this is kind of how I've learned to do it. It's just kind of you know keep your finger like that and don't move your fingers at all. Just leave them like that and then just move your wrist back and forth. Some kits come with a cable like the one you like the uh, kit you can purchase off of uh, Tindy but you may have to locate and purchase your own 3.5 millimeter TRS tail here. Uh, I just found on an old audio cable with 3.5 millimeter pin on it and I just cut off the other end and I stripped the wires and soldered that in place. In most cases, you will have to purchase all of your components and the circuit board individually. Now, I'll put a link to the VK3 IL boards and the bill of materials in the description. Uh, the small board costs about $11 or so, uh, and uh, $17 for the long board. So, this, you know, the short one's here, about $11. You can also print your own either with a JLC PCB or a all PCB. You make about five boards of the small or the large, I think, um, for about $5. So on the high end, everything c it c will be sourced for you, and you'll get the circuit board, and all you have to do is put it together on Tindy, but that Tindy price is $50, so you may not want to pay that much. You may just want to source your own parts, but it's up to you. I just used a perf board inside of this uh, K5DEZ uh, project, and everything cost me right about $5, including this enclosure. If you're interested in building this paddle and want to see how to do that, Alan Wolke, W2AEW, recently made a video of this uh, build. It, he, it was a uh, perfect timing as he released it right about the time I had finished my last field test on these paddles. So I'll put a link to his video in the description as well. And don't forget to subscribe to his channel. He has some really, really good videos. So let's go ahead and get over to the grades. Let me emphasize, as I always do, that these are my thoughts and impressions based on my field tests. And of course, you may have different opinions and feel a little different about these paddles than I do. But I'm gonna go first with the cost. And so the cost of these paddles, as you can guess, is going to be, I'm going to give that a, a grade of an A. And the reason I'm giving it a grade of an A is because you can build this by yourself uh, with a few little parts in the circuit board for right about $5. Uh, you can go up from there. You may spend a little bit more, but on the t unless you're doing that, uh, that Tindy uh, kit that's already assembled all the uh, parts for you and everything, all you got to do is put it together. You're, you're looking at maximum probably maybe $20 if you, get this, if, you, if you get this $17 board and then all the components, maybe $20, $25, but still half the price of that $50 board. If you have components lying around, around, all the better. So, you know, it just varies, but still the price, you can't beat it for as little as $5. For durability, I, uh, I'm going to give this an A. There's no mechanical parts here. The, the paddles should vast, last a very, very long time. The only reason that I can see that you might, uh, that these might go bad is if you uh, are rough on them and maybe a, a solder joint comes loose or something like that, but still, you can repair these yourself. So these will last you a very long time. So durability is an A. Uh, weight is an A. The key falls well within the weight range of, of uh, being very light. And it's probably, if it's not one of the lightest, it's probably the lightest one that I've reviewed at this point. Size, also definitely small and compact. I'm going to give it an A. So uh, the weight's an A, the size is an A. And uh, so definitely you can, can, uh, you can pack this away into a very tight space. For agility, um, you, most people are going to have to get a little practice under their belt in order to send effectively with this. 
you uh, can sand it pretty good if you if you have your muscle memory in place and you've you've practiced a little bit. But I found that the space between the two sides of these paddles caused some problems because the the paddles are, are you know we normally use are f are further apart and not this this close together. So that's also another little struggle I had. Customer service. I'm just going to put a not applicable. This is a homebrew or kit build in most cases, so customer service doesn't really apply unless you don't want to give yourself a grade as far as how well you customer service yourself, but uh, it doesn't make sense. Enclosure, I'm going to give it a pass. Of course, that depends on whether or not you, you enclose it with some sort of a heat shrink and protect it a little bit. Mounting options, I'm going to give it a D. Uh, there is no real mounting option when you finish this kit. Of course, there are the 3D printed you know, options that you can go and, and uh, figure out, but really, you're on your own. This is just designed to be held in your hand unless you uh, you uh, are creative. So uh, a D on the mounting. Beauty, not the prettiest, not the ugliest. It's okay. I uh, I don't know. I'm just in the middle on that, so I'm just going to give it a C. And that wraps up my thoughts on this key. So let's go ahead and get it plugged into the Morse Reno and give it a test run. Okay, folks, that's it. That is the VK3 IL pressure paddle. Uh, it's a very, very inexpensive paddle and uh, a paddle that can be very effective uh, if you have a little practice with it. No mechanical parts, so it's great for maybe winter operation and other, other times where you might not uh, want to have a mechanical paddle. Uh, so don't forget, this is a series. I have more paddles to review coming up. I have at least three more on tap, including one from Japan. So uh, come on back and we will see you next time. 73.